Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Podcast is filmed before a live feline audience. Good evening, everybody. Once again, we're back again talking about Central Colorado, talking about all the weird things that we normally would do in Colorado and all that mess and having ourselves a really good time and, well, that's what we, what we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I have to say, I love our little uh, intro ditty. Quite lovely. I enjoy it. I, I was very happy to you find that. Be you bopping know. here in my seat. Yeah, so, I was. I, I was, like it. I was happy to find that. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least for this series, the little ditty that we have. For this yeah, series. exactly. Like so. All right. We're playing in the middle of our state. Well, what we would middle-ish of our state yes. it's really the space that when people are playing in the mountains this is where it really congregates and where folks are really going to be and um doing the traditional expected mountain activities so yes. that's what we're going to focus on tonight i know i've got my section chris you've got your section check you're going to focus on some things so we've all got kind of our special specialities that we're going to help and hopefully you can learn a little something and know what to expect when you get up there and uh, find your own adventures when you go. Yeah. So, yep. That is our goal tonight. Exactly. And we're going, we've split ourselves up into threes. So Alice is going to be talking about the fauna, all the animals yes. and everything that lives in the areas that we're going to go play in. Yes. Uh, Chris tonight is going to talk to us about the actual activities, like uh, let's see, what river rafting, camping, backpacking, yeah, backpacking, hiking, up and down the very sheer horrible. I don't rock. Do you rock? Have you ever rock climbed? Have you ever done rock no, climbing? No, no, that's I have. Yeah, that's that's, that's not. Uh, so here's the reason why when we were little and we'd never go to the mountains and we'd go picnicking and we'd always go and park it and there's inevitably there was an ambulance <laughs> in the parking in the picnic area because somebody was rock climbing and they hurt themselves. And from yeah. that moment I was like, you know, I'm never I'm probably never gonna do that. When no. I when I first got my um my first uh SLR camera, <clears throat> my first thirty five millimeter camera. We went up to St. Mary's Glacier. Mm. And as soon as we got up to the glacier, we were seeing Mountain Rescue come back down the other way, <laughs> carrying somebody. Some inevitable. Um, you know, I, it was. Ice climbing or something? Yeah, they were, yeah. you know, they're carrying somebody off the glacier. And of course, me being the fool that I am, I'm going to take pictures. Well, you, and yeah. Welcome to people filming everything now yeah, i know right i mean the game, weren't you well yeah <laughs> and at that time thank goodness that there wasn't anything like that because there's no, no record of <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness. what we did <laughs> we grew up before yes. the internet oh my god yeah. <laughs> we stupid stuff we did in the backyard oh, oh. <laughs> here alice stand uh, on this board fly me in the air we'll have to tell that story one time on a podcast because that's yeah it's a great oh yeah moment yeah <laughs> and then Dawn got involved. And... Well, it was just—it was scary. I could have anyway. Preview. I couldn't <laughs> breathe. That I got hurt. And it was like, don't tell mom. So. <laughs> exactly. Let's get back on topic. You know, it's going to be a good story when it ends with "Don't tell, don't mom. tell mom." You're okay. <laughs> You're, You're okay. okay. Just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll um, tell you later. Let's see tonight. 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 
Well, we're going to talk about how to play in the mountains, not rock climbing, by the way. We aren't going to rock climb, but how to play yeah. in our mountains and what things you could do. Some of them are day trips. Some of them are longer than a day trip. It's just really how you want to focus your time. But yeah. um, Chris has a lot more perspective living up there in those spaces. So yeah, and she, she, had, the avail <laughs> she had the availability to do a lot yeah. more than we did. Proximity and yeah. time and stuff. Um, so. But yeah, um, mountains. Rivers, wildlife, and minerals. Yay. I know. Everybody's like, oh, really? Yay. Rocks. Yeah. yeah. Rocks. Trust me. This is pretty cool. Oh, and volcanism. Oh, yes. Not I'll say. Not, not no, that. Not that dude. <laughs> All right, Chris, go for it. You have some good perspective on some fun mountain things to do. I do, and I have a bunch of notes. So if you see me looking at my phone, I'm not checking email while I'm talking. I'm actually <laughs> referring to my notes because I didn't want to forget some stuff. Um, but yes, growing up in the mountains or the foothills, really, um, we we lived up on Lookout Mountain for, well, we lived in Golden through my grade school years and then middle school, high school, I was up on Lookout Mountain. And so, you know, we'd already cut off half an hour. So getting up into the mountains to camp mm -hmm. was great. We also, I mean, hiking, many people would have considered a day hike what I did to go to and from school. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to avoid riding the bus, uh, the school bus down to, um, to high school. Didn't do that in junior high, um, a little too far, but, um, but yeah, so hiking around in the mountains is definitely what I consider home. Um, uh, when I think about, uh, going to church, this is what it means to me. Um, you know, there's, there is church, right? But absolutely. Right. But if I want to just really feel, um, spiritually fulfilled, it is hiking in the mountains and, Dad and I, from um, junior high forward, we would do hiking and backpacking for a long weekend in the spring, summer, and ski in the winter. So um, skiing will be its own episode, and it'll be just me, probably, because these two don't give a hoot about skiing. Yeah. So thank you. I will um, spare them that, but <laughs> I know it is definitely, you know, Colorado is ski country USA, so I will definitely... Um, take some time to fill you in on my experiences skiing. I've skied all over the state. Um, but now I wanted to focus on hiking, river rafting. Oh gosh, there's so much to do. And uh, for this episode, I've decided to focus in the Buena Vista Salida area. So that is famous for the Collegiate Peaks. So here's where I'm going to reference my notes. <laughs> where... Um, this is the Sawatch Mountain Range, home to over eight peaks over 14,000 feet. So if you want to knock a few of your 14ers, the 52, 53, off your list, this is a good place to do it. Um, so the highest is Mount Harvard. And then the Collegiate Peaks, there are, which is a subset of the peaks in um, the Sawatch Mountain Range, are Harvard. Yale, Princeton, Oxford, and Columbia. I've hiked on Yale and Harvard, and I've done some backpacking and camping in Harvard um, on Harvard. So if you make either Buena Vista or Salida, they're very close to each other. And when you look at like what to do in those areas, the two have come together for um, tourist stuff. So the river rafting operations, the... Um, reservations for campgrounds or RV camping, all of that stuff is a combined website of the two cities. Mm -hmm. So you make one of those two your home base and then start from there. There are amazing day hikes on any of the peaks in Sawatch Mountains. You don't have to scale the 14 or there's plenty of trails of varying ability and all of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you can really have a fantastic vacation in this part of the state if it's um if it's the outdoors that you want to to play in so let me see some of the tips i have uh hiking so the time that we 
hiked and, and camped uh, over the weekend on Harvard was um, we had all kinds of stuff, right? You start in the hot sun at, uh, in, um, I think we were starting in Buena Vista and you drive up, you know, and you park in the, the trailhead going up. The first thing you want to do is um, sign the book. You want to say what date you're starting your hike, how long you plan to be in the back country and when you're planning on returning. You also want to let someone on the home in the home base know when you're planning on coming back. So heaven forbid something should happen. They know when to send out the cavalry to come get you. And in some cases, it's quite literally a cavalry, but I'm just kidding. Um, Mountain rescue oh, will, rescue. you know, yeah. will be coming up because um, don't count on your cell phone working in all of oh, these spaces. No. If you're down in a valley, you're not going to get any service. Right. So you really have to um, do it old school. Have a paper map with you. Most of the maps that you buy are the USGS, the U.S. Geological Society maps that are that um, weird kind of like it's, water it's resistant, water resistant paper. paper. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of waxy coated. Yeah. So that you can, um, you know, if you run into the elements, you can still have your, your map won't run away and the ink won't run. Um, so the other thing I'll warn you is <laughs> all of these hikes start with a pretty heavy incline. So, you know, you start and you're thinking, man, what have I gotten myself into? Because it is a lot of up. up. Have faith. <laughs> After the first, I don't know, half mile, depends on the trail, of course, but um, after the first half mile or so, you've kind of gotten up to where everything kind of levels off. And then, yeah, of course, there'll be occasional steep spots, but um, then they've kind of built switchbacks into the trails so that you're not facing a killer incline all the time. Mm -hmm. um, there are several false peaks. You think, oh, I see the top. <laughs> I'm almost there. And then you get up there and nope no nope. there's still more up. <laughs> yeah but, well, you've got another 400 feet to go like four, <laughs> yeah. fourteen thousand feet above sea levels a lot yeah so and it takes a while yeah. and, and i didn't go to the top of either one of these um mount yale i just we just did like a day hike we hiked in maybe three or four miles and then came back out uh -huh. um mount harvard we went and we camped above eleven thousand feet because we were above timberline when we were mm. camping and so um some tips with with the camping I have listed here. Let's see here. So, of course, the big one is pack it in, pack it out, right? There's no trash cans up there. There are no porta potties. So even your poop, you pack it in, pack it out. They don't even let you bury it in anymore. They don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, because the bears, or whatever, dig it up and then, you know. Mm -hmm. Because of also what we eat will contaminate well, And our bacteria else. is bad. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not natural for that. Situation. Right. And there are oh, what a topic. Um, I know <laughs> there are stores in um, Buena Vista and Salida where you can pick up the bags mm -hmm. to store your poop so that it isn't, you know, going to leak all over your backpack or whatever. Yeah. Um, if you have a campfire, heed the uh, or plan on having a campfire, heed the fire war yeah. um, le danger level before you begin. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if it's permitted, then only do it in the designated fire pits. Do not make your own space. And even in the designated fire pits, make sure you douse it with water and with sand. Stir it, water sand. Make sure it's, you know, cool to the, you don't have to like dig your hands in the ashes, but make sure it feels cool that yeah. there's no heat before you go to sleep or before you leave. Yeah. Um, the the winds will kick up overnight and get those sparks of flying. Mm -hmm. Eighty five percent of our forest fires in Colorado are human um, caused. Caused. Yeah. Yeah. So we like to think that lightning does a lot, and lightning does a fair amount, but um, humans do cause the majority. So just be super careful if you're going to have a campfire. Um, water, bring it with you. All of the um, these collegiate peaks, you know, the 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 fourteeners are the starting point. <laughs> of many of the rivers mm -hmm. so there is water coming down creeks what makes these hikes so gorgeous right you have these beautiful babbling brooks um and you know by all means you can use this water but for safety definitely boil it or yeah. use the like, um don't drink it out of the stream. sterilization tabs or whatever you call those little those purifying pellets that you put in yeah 
Um, before, yeah, just don't drink it directly from the water or from the, the creek. I've never had a problem with drinking the water out of these creeks, particularly when you get up super high. Um, but, you know, be cautious. I know people who have and who pets who have. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that that they're uh, that you take that caution. So if you are backpacking, I will say that weight matters. Um, you know, you, you <laughs> yeah. Charles is like, oh, yeah. Um, so don't do what my friends and I did on a hike hiking trip. They decided like they weren't experienced. And so I'm coming with all my free destroyed stuff and they have like cans of ravi of the, you know, raviolios mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm like, you know, you're going to regret that about two <laughs> miles in. <laughs> all right. So. But but on the same time, like, don't get sucked in REI and, you know, all of the sporting goods stores have all of these, you know, food for camping, freeze dried <laughs> meals. But the, they're not yeah. even MREs. They're it's, just freeze dried. Yeah. They're like astronaut food. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and most of them are super expensive and don't taste very good. Or they're like kitschy things like freeze dried ice cream. You it's awful. So <laughs> go to the grocery store. There's, you know packets of ramen right i would not suggest like the cup of noodles because then you've got crap to More haul off the mountain yeah yeah but um you know you're gonna have a little saucepan you're boiling your water in and just oatmeal little packets of oatmeal, packets are, of good, oatmeal are amazing you can even do like mac and cheese just mm -hmm. remember to bring the dried milk to add to it although i've made it without that and it's just you know it's you're good. starving when you've been hiking for several <laughs> miles at altitude so you know all food is good all food is outside. delicious that's right you want to you want to get a reputation for being a great cook cook for folks that are up at eleven thousand feet um water boils colder there mm -hmm. so you know it's still going to be hot but it's not going to be hot hot so plan on if you are going to make noodles it's going to take a little longer long time to boil your noodles. to boil your noodles mm -hmm. and you know and it will take more water mm -hmm. yes it will take more water um so keep your gear light, uh, specifically like, you know, one of those small, you, you need something on the ground between you and the ground. Um, we typically use the ones that, um, kind of air fill, or you can use foam. That's the pretty lightweight. What? The pads, the, the, the pads, pads, sorry, camp okay. pads. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not going to bring your full blown air mattress with you cause those are heavy. But they do, there are some that are designed for backpacking. So that is worth the investment. Um, the other is your sleeping bag. So for me, like you buy the lightest weight one you can that is rated cold enough for you. So here's where I sacrifice a little bit of weight. I will carry a heavier, slightly heavier backpack because I freeze. And when you're camping at Timberline, it gets cold. I've been caught in snowstorms while camping, uh, July, August, mm. snows at any time in Colorado, the higher you get. So be prepared to be cold at night. So I, like I said, that's where I, I sacrifice and carry something a little bit heavier because I've just had too many nights where I feel like I'm going to freeze to death because it says it's rated for 10 below, but no, I don't think so. Do, well, you, do you normally camp out of a tent or do you camp with a tent? I camp with a tent, but it is a small backpacker tent. Okay. So really it's enough room for you and your your partner and um, and your backpacks to get them out of the weather. Yeah. And that's okay. about it. I and mean, they're low profile. They're very yeah. low profile because it's windy, yeah. right? So you don't. You want to just keep them, um, you know, little bivouac things. Yeah. And you want to keep them lightweight, right? So it's, um, they're aluminum poles and, or the, the bendy fiberglass poles mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and, and nylon. So they're not designed to keep you warm at all. They might keep the rain off of you and keep the wind off of you, but that's about it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> rain, that's cute. I know, right? At night, it's not rain. It's, no, it's not rain. It's, it's snow. snow. It's it might snow. be sleet. Yeah. It might be hail, but yeah. It's snow. <laughs> um, also, wear, pack a, a ski hat, you know, one of these mm -hmm. big ski hats Always. to wear at night. If anything, you know, even if during the day you don't need it because it's sunny and you're fine and you're hiking, so you're warm enough. But 
at night yeah. um you lose a lot of of your heat your core heat out of your head so definitely have that hat to wear at night i also bring extra socks because you mm -hmm. never know when you're going to slip into the water accidentally mm -hmm. or the weather gets bad and you're walking through muck um, you know, your hiking boots will protect you from a lot of that, but occasionally you get your socks wet well, you or you just sweat. Sweaty. I was like sweaty feet too. You just yeah, need to have dry exactly. socks. Exactly. You need dry socks. And I pack like thick socks to wear to bed mm -hmm. <laughs> over my other socks. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, first aid kit. So other oh, than the yeah. usual first aid, definitely bring something for blisters. Yeah. It, there is nothing worse then getting to the top of the mountain and realizing that you've got blisters that have popped and you got to hike yourself out of yeah. there and you're miserable. And while um, your shoes rub differently when you're going down the mountain versus up the mountain, <laughs> you get toes blisters rather than heel blisters. But um, nonetheless, it's painful and miserable. So yeah. having those those cushy blister band-aids mm -hmm. are useful and also moleskin. So if you're smart and you catch that there's, you know, a hot spot happening on your shoes, by all means, stop and put some moleskin on and protect yourself from getting that blister. I'm I'm going to I'm going to hijack you here for a minute. Yeah, sure. Diabetics. <clears throat> I'm going to be speaking directly to you and especially about foot care. If you are diabetic, please watch your blood sugar careful and watch how those blisters are forming on your feet because it's not a question of if they will. It's a question of when you need to take very good care and make sure that you do have at least two or three changes of socks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cushioned socks. Mm -hmm. For sure. Also in that first aid kit, you need clean gauze. Mm -hmm. You also need not, do not use Neosporin. Please do not use Neosporin. Okay. Um, the reason that I'm so adamant about this is because well, that's not what to, wound care tells you. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been through wound care for the last two years. And there we are, folks. Mm -hmm. It's a result of foot ulcers. And diabetics, you know what I'm talking about when I say foot ulcers. Okay. So just to make sure you know, there it is. And, okay. you know, even non diabetics, watch your feet, right? You, the last thing you need is miserable feet. Because they can get infected pretty quickly. They really like, can. You're surprised how bad, like, you think, oh, it's just a blister, but it can go south real fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. you think you're going to walk it off. Yeah, well, and just <laughs> yeah. that's why the dry socks are important because if it continues to stay moist, it just builds and breeds that. That's absolutely. right. In there, and it's just, it's not comfortable. And so. why I say two or three pairs of socks. Yeah. Honestly, you should be, if you're going to be doing a multi day hike, you should be changing your socks every day you're on that yeah. hike. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Anyway, anyway, sorry, I, oh, no. I, no, I'm very point. adamant about this because of what I've been through. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have on my list is to make sure you have an ace bandage or so in your uh, first aid kit in case you do twist an ankle or twist a wrist or whatever that, you know, just mm -hmm. again, you're not across the street from 7-Eleven, right? You have to make sure that you have gear. Um, you know, you can even use ace bandages to help if god forbid you need to make a makeshift um uh a sling coming out of yeah to drag exactly. people out drag people out um and then a small pair of scissors mostly to cut the mole skin but you know so if you've got a swiss army knife with scissors on them that's sufficient but just to make sure you have that and the other thing i didn't list here but thought of later is um itch cream <laughs> oh yeah you um, get bug bites <laughs> bug bites you know uh, mosquitoes aren't why is annoying up at altitude, but what you get instead are these deer flies. Oh. And oh. yeah, right? They are. <laughs> if you know, you know, because that is the worst. It is the worst it pain the in the worst. world. They are. They're nasty. Deer and especially if they flies, do it both of them. Yeah. dead on, on the, the center, center of your back that you can't reach. Exactly. Oh. You know? And, and I don't find that they itch per se oh. after so, but they don't, um, they don't have any... Mosquitoes are at least polite enough to like give you a little numbing juice and so you don't feel the needle going in as it were. Right. Yeah. No, these little flies, they just take it's a bite out of it. Mm. They'll yeah. take like they'll hunk a hole a hole out of your back. Mm -hmm. Like it's like removing flesh. Mm -hmm. It's not just poking yeah. a hole. It's the worst. They take a divot out oh, of you. It hurts. So yeah, they take the yeah. plug out of you. Yeah. Oh, they're the oh. So they're so, like the little biopsy things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, oh, the biopsy punch. punch, 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 punch. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, so when you see the deers uh, and the elk just like being so annoyed by these flies, now you know why. Yeah. They're really, really yeah, awful. Yeah, and that's something else I'm going to say. There, Occasionally, we were watching the elk down at um, Moraine Park in Rocky Mountain National yeah. Park in that meadow, and all of a sudden, you see about four or five of them just take off running. running? Yeah, because they're done with the flies. They right, bit to death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. awful. Yeah, um, and then the other thing I have, and I know both of you have this too, is you know watch the weather. Oh, um, it can, please, yeah, it can please. turn on a dime, particularly after noon. Um, it's the afternoon when mm -hmm. the clouds tend to come in, and they move fast. Uh huh. And lightning is dangerous above timberline, and so if you're you know, if you're camping, Big it's sign. one thing if it's a day hike and yeah. you're like, uh, I think we need to turn around and get out of here. But if you're camping and you're up at Timberline, you might not see it. You just smell it yeah. and you feel the back of your hair is standing up and the hair is on the back of your neck standing up. And you're like, mm, OK, get to lower elevation. Like, Go low, but don't stand under a tree. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't. Like, don't do those Go things. Go low. You don't have to, like, necessarily hike down to lower elevation but find a ravine a find spot. a low spot to hang out in for a little while get rid of like if you have a metal frame backpack ditch that you know just get rid of the metal carabiners get them off you yeah exactly yeah. and just uh you know you can ride it out but that's how you ride it out mm -hmm. um because they are fast storms they I are have to say that, oh, yeah. that they're kind of um they won't Usually at night, they'll last longer because of the, just the temperature change. But we've got really cold air coming into really hot air or really hot air yeah. moving out of really cold air. And so that those extremes of air are what causes that those big weather fluctuations. So it happens quickly, but it's a lot in a very short amount of time. That's right. So, and yeah, you can ride it out because it's like you're saying, like 20 minutes or so. But um, but that 20 minutes feels like a long time when <clears throat> you're surrounded by, you know, lightning bolts and Zeus well, getting revenge on the rest <laughs> of the world. And here's the other piece of that, you know, like, well, we have a lot of folks who come up from warmer climates that come up to our mountains. Uh, any water that you come across in our mountains is cold, whether oh, it's falling yeah. from the sky or in the rivers. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. So it's your the temperature is going to drop a good 20 degrees. Yeah. In that 20 minutes, whatever that rainstorm is. So you're mm -hmm. going to go from it could be 80 degrees up sure. there. Yeah. And then a rainstorm will come through and it's 65. And then that's where it's going to be the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So you got there's big Pack fluctuations. Yeah. Black layers. Layers, layers, layers. It's cold water coming and you're not going to. You know, I lived in Texas for three years and it was really weird to be able to be in a rainstorm and be completely fine and not have to get out and be like I, hotter. And after when we visited storm. you, I'm like, it's raining, but it's not it's, cold. No, it is yeah. odd. The weirdest. It was, <laughs> it was for me, it was weird. Yeah, see, go, visiting you down in Corpus and then also going to Orlando. Yeah. The rain upsets me. <laughs> Not, in those no places relief. there's no relief that's right like, yeah we get relief yeah there it you just know. gets muggy right well, here and then, it's then we hear the stories of the folks who live down there or the uh the youtubers who do the the travel videos for uh magic kingdom and such and they say and then the rain will cool it off no it doesn't no, it doesn't no. <laughs> cool it off that's cute what you're so cute when you say that right <laughs> isn't it isn't that <laughs> so nice cute. that's isn't so cute it? no yeah it's like oh it's just anyway yeah. just be anyway. prepared for that i think that's yeah, another piece exactly of being yeah. in the mountains and playing in the mountains especially with the camping because i don't camp for a variety of reasons yeah. but you know that the, yeah. temp the temperature fluctuation is huge so you know all these warnings taken into account why do you even do this i'm not trying to scare you i've no. done it like <laughs> Uh, you know, there were summers where I just <clears throat> lived out of a backpack and, you know, out of a tent and loved every second of it. Why? You know, because stunning views. Uh -huh. Right. And I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a photograph of why, of why we do it mm -hmm. right yeah. here. Yeah, definitely. Either that or a, do a, do a, a little video clip like I do at the beginning yeah, of these things. Sunrise, yeah. Sunset. This is why. Well, oh, yes. And you're and, out of the city. And yeah. you're away from things and light pollution and noise pollution oh, yeah. you know, and the peace exactly. and all. And, um, you know, and up at that altitude, again, not only are you out of light pollution, but you're out of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the stars <laughs> are incredible. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because, you know, you you didn't know there were that many stars in the sky. It is incredible up yeah, there. Yeah, that rarefied air. Yeah, yeah, that rarefied air. And particularly if you happen to be up there, you know, in a new moon. Um, full moon, oh, full you don't even need a flashlight, flashlight no, right? Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, but um, 
Although I have funny stories about that yeah. and, and the shadows of wildlife going by our tent at <laughs> night because, you know, with the moonlight, it just, it's like a spotlight. It's like a street light out there. It totally it's is. It's just like yeah. a street light. And, and so, you know, yeah, the paw, there's the story of the paw. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think it was a raccoon or something and it was just like sitting up on its high haunches, but the shadow made it look like it was this monster paw <laughs> and it was, and when uh, the person I was hiking with, you know, she was slept through the whole thing. And then when I woke her up, she, I was like, oh my gosh, there was this creature and it was this. So now she still teases me about the paw. The paw. Um, so if, you know, overnight backpacking isn't for you, there are plenty of other options in this area. So often people can set up base camp, right? So if you have a big party and people like to do that, you have a base camp and, or even just a base camp where you don't want to spend money on hotels. So you camp, but you camp out of your car, you camp out of an RV, plenty of places to do that closer to Buena Vista and Salida. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do need to reserve space. And also when you're backpacking, where is my note on this? It says, um, you know, if you only camp in existing campsites or if you're in public land that allows dispersed camping, which is what they call the, you know, get off the trail and find a place and set up your tent. Um, so only do that where it's allowed. Otherwise, the designated campsites, which are kind of nice, right? Because the fire pit's built. They've flattened a space so that you're not Bathrooms. sleeping on a rock. Well, there's not always. Not Well, there's not a pit toilets, at least. Not always. Oh, sad day. <laughs> but See, they have. The reason I don't camp. <laughs> they have pre-built the fire pit for you. So you know it's okay to have a fire there. Um, they've flattened space so that you can set up a tent and mm. not be sleeping on Flat, an yeah, incline pads. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then keep the trail in sight when you do that. Um, I have camped in places like we were talking about, why do you do this? We've camped in places where we didn't see any other humans mm -hmm. other than we do have the trail in sight. So you occasionally see day hikers coming up and down, but otherwise we have the place to ourselves. Once that stops for the evening, um, it is an incredible adventure to feel like you're alone on earth. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it is really, mm -hmm. um, fulfilling to me it's like spiritually fulfilling to just get back in touch with nature and all of that um or if you're not into camping there are plenty of hotels in these spaces as well um i did that i will go into that in a minute but i stayed in a hotel when i got super sunburned yeah <laughs> and we were Which planning can happen easy at oh, altitude yeah. so, so sunscreen is important that's my segue <laughs> to river rafting Yay! so up in this space, up in the Sawatch Mountain area, there are um, 4,650 down feet across 152 miles mm -hmm. in these rivers. So nice. rafters can find anything from roaring class four, class five rapids, mm -hmm. which are the big scary rapids, um, down to milder class two, class three, which are, you're not rowing because it's not level but you know they're nice rapids that are kind of a fun little rush better if you have smaller children mm -hmm. um or are beginners so um, my tip on that is if you do have beginners and or small kids please do not go any higher than a three a class three rapid i think yeah, like you are correct I've, I've done that with kiddos and it three is a good one personally i've done fives not a whole thing of fives. It had like one or twos in there, or oh, one or sure. two fives in there. It was mix. mostly fours, yeah. but it's and there was a lot of movement. This year we have a lot of class four, class five. Mm -hmm. So it changes oh, yeah. over the course of the season. So you really have to like tune in, listen in, talk to the Chamber of Commerce or, or the river rafting guides. I highly recommend doing this with a guide with an outfitter with for an sure. outfitter mm -hmm. um two reasons one you have the outfitter they will provide you the gear that you need yeah and they will provide the bus at the bottom to schlep you back up yes. to your car so um they say it is class four and class five are for 18 ages 14 years and over mm -hmm. who are strong swimmers so even yeah. if you have an older kiddo um if they're not a strong swimmer don't risk it. Really don't risk it. And and it's cold water. It Again, is very cold, cold water. water. So even if you think you're a good, strong swimmer, it doesn't take long 
to go into hyperthermia. hypothermia. Yeah, so cold real yeah. Quick. Um, I've never capsized out of one of the professional outfitter boats. Me neither. Not yeah. Out. Um, but you're outfitted as if you're going to, right? Mm -hmm. So they put you in a helmet. They put you, um, life vests. Life vests are required. It's state law. Anytime yeah. you're on water, you have to have a life vest and on. And a helmet. They have require both. Do they? Mm -hmm. Even for flat water? Mm -hmm. For, um, yep. I mean, for like, not for like lakes necessarily. No, but if you're as an outfitter, if you're oh, oh, yeah, with yeah. an outfitter, they if require a, a yeah, helmet and absolutely. a uh, life vest. So um, this is the Arkansas River that goes through this area. It is one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites well. I've ever wrapped. Yeah. In. So um, you go, th you can go through, depending on where you put in, whether you're in Buena Vista or Salida, you can go through Browns Canyon. I've done that a couple of times. Um, and there you put in at Buena Vista. There's Bighorn Sheep Canyon mm. and, of course, the Royal Gorge, um, mm. which is quite a ways down. But some of these, so the rafting, there's a whole slew of rafting outfitters, um, and they all have different levels of adventure. The same outfitter will have different levels of adventure, ranging from, you know, a two-hour trip that's um, class three, maybe you'll hit a class four depending on the season, um, to half-day trips, which is what I tended to do. Yeah um to full day trips to two or three night overnight trips mm -hmm. and that's where you kind of get to the royal gorge and that kind of thing the nice thing about those two to the three day trips is they take care of everything for you you just show up maybe with your sunscreen and a water bottle um and your insect repellent yeah um and they provide the food they provide the safety gear they provide tents sleeping bags, all of it. So that's a, a really fun way to be on the water for multiple days. Um, sunscreen. Always. Always, always. Um, so I touched on this a second ago. My friend and I went, we were, our plan was to do river rafting in the morning for half a day. And then we were gonna hike Mount Yale and camp. Um, somewhere on Mount Yale mm. that evening. Um, I got off the river and even though I had put on sunscreen, you're in the water at altitude, everything's working against you as far as sunburn goes, no matter how dark your skin is naturally. Mm -hmm. So you will get sunburned um, unless, like I didn't have adequate sunscreen. I had like 30 SPF and what I needed was like Full zinc oxide. Yeah. <laughs> hundred SPF they make now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I ended up I was blistered and um Owie. not feeling very well. So yeah. we did we hiked for a couple of hours, <clears throat> but then we decided um to to just drive for a while. So we went kind of off off roading on some dirt roads and ended up finding a lodge that was um a ski lodge. But a small one, I think, for maybe Monarch or well, I don't, I don't know where we ended up, but it was a small ski lodge, and so like we were the only people there, so they were happy to see us, and it was relatively inexpensive, and and it was a good thing that we did that. So, you know, there are spaces to to um, to hotel throughout this area, um, yeah. So, the other alternative to you know sunscreen is to wear lightweight lightweight but long sleeve or pants um the only note i have on that is that it, should you fall in that could be dangerous it could, yeah right it so could. you know you don't want clothes to weigh you down but i would think that a lightweight one of those like spf shirts is probably fine they're great right? and then like this one is a, lo a long sleeve really light t-shirt yeah. yeah long sleeve i have to do that anyway because i'm allergic to everything up there so yeah <laughs> but like nowadays i would wear a rashy mm-hmm um, just to make sure that my back is covered um, and, you know, and my arms maybe at least up to here. And, yeah. and so then I have limited reapply sunscreen during your, you know, break. Nose and ears. Though. Nose and ears. Yeah. You know, you're you're wearing a helmet, so you think you've got your face covered, but you really don't. And then, it, yeah, particularly if you're wearing reflective glasses because, you know, you want to see in the water, um, then you've got one more thing against you on your poor mm -hmm. nose. <laughs> And everyone up there looks like, you know, has the, the zinc oxide on their nose. And, and they've gotten better at that, though. Sunscreens that yeah. contain it don't, you don't have the white paste anymore, you know. But anyway, 
Um, it is incredible to be on the water and do the river rafting. It's a combination of, you know, you're away from the roads, even you're away from, you know, just the, and the comfort of the sound of the river. Water. Um, particularly if you have a guide who's making sure that you're as safe as you can be, uh, getting through, you do have to sign a waiver, of course, because there is risk, um, if there are rapids, but you know, most of the time you don't, you don't fall overboard <laughs> when you're with an outfitter. So, you know, it's, um, so fun and you get to participate, you get to, you know, steer the boat and they'll tell you how to do that. And you're, you're the boater. You are the you boater. You have to make it happen to yeah. get it down there. It's not, you the do. water's not just pushing you. You have to do some things to make it you happen. You do and so. make sure that you get to the right part of the rapids yeah. that isn't have an eddy or whatever. And, um, but it is so gorgeous. And you see wildlife that you wouldn't see even hiking that mm -hmm. are coming down to the water. So I'm sure I've taken a ton of time, but I, you can tell I'm very excited about it. I love being outside in Colorado. Alice. Yeah. Since she did the segue of the wildlife. wildlife. Yeah. So there's some big fives in Colorado that you're probably going to see. Um, I have my props because I'm that kid. But in Colorado, um, the everybody wants to see a bear and everybody wants to see a moose and everybody wants to see elk and everybody wants to see a mountain lion. Everybody wants to see bighorn sheep. Those are kind of our big five. Um, you can try. That's not guaranteed because animals are animals and they have behaviors. And if it's hot, they're not out. Um, if it's cold, they're not out. So you, if it's bright in the middle of the day, they're not out. So you got to really know their behavior and know their timing, but you can, what you probably are going to see more often than not with the animals up there is the evidence of them, not necessarily them. Um, and we last podcast, I think I hit my, what I really wanted to hit was keeping the wildlife wild and making sure that you are respecting their house because you're going to where they live. Um, you're not primary there you're vi the visitor and just making sure you're respecting that space um but you will see like the ones you'll probably see the most are chipmunks and squirrels um marmots um pika some of those fun little rodents that move about a lot of birds there's a lot of mountain birds that you'll see up there um we do have hummingbirds i think that's one of the fun things about mountains yeah. are hummingbirds mm -hmm. and um they zip across there all the time so that's a kind of a unique something that you wouldn't ex wouldn't think you'd see but you will see a lot of those we do have a lot of invertebrates a lot of butterflies go up there a lot of moths are up there of course your bees and your flies <laughs> <laughs> yay flies um but there you know you do have the whole entire animal kingdom represented in some ways um thing to think about too is that you're looking at and as what I do for a living, I look at it as a whole ecosystem. So the ecology of it and the balance of it and how you're going from different ecosystems as you go higher up in elevation and those things change. And then you're also going to see the changes in the wildlife as well. So, you know, the higher up you go, the better chances you're going to see the moose or the elk, um, mm -hmm. even your bear. That's when you're going to get up there. Your mountain lions are going to be in those mid ranges, maybe not so high. Um, mountain goats and mountain sheep, uh, bighorn sheep, they're going to be probably really high up. Um, so, you know, just know that you, at different elevations are where you're going to see those different things. Um, they're not your pets. You're, they're not going to behave as you want them to behave. They're going to behave as they should and they're going to do their thing. Um, ooh, one thing this is that reminded me of you were uh, kind of mid elevation. You'll see a lot of beaver and a lot of beaver ponds. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that, that the beaver do for the wetlands and the water systems is they create homes for a lot of other animals. So that's where you get a lot of good fishing and a lot of good um, kind of looking for dragonflies and those sorts of things as well. Um, and beaver chew and, and how they down that. And um, that's kind of fun to look for. Uh, I enjoy that a lot looking for beaver beaver chew and beaver down so um my big thing was already done last week with the whole wildlife wild and keeping it that way so i really didn't want to reiterate that but you can see those traditional um mountain animals our state mammal is the bighorn sheep our state bird is the lark bunting but that's actually a plains bird so you won't see them up in the mountains <laughs> um so you won't see them up there but you know we've got our 
you know, state flowers, the blue columbine, not the pink or the yellow, the blue ones. And those are a mountain flower. Don't pick them. Don't pick them. You'll, there's fines. Um, and then our straight tree is the blue spruce. So there's some, you get to see those. And our state symbols are represented in our mountains and especially these spaces that we're talking about now is where mm-hmm. you get to see those. So mm-hmm. that was kind of my animal thing in a nutshell. I know it's pretty short lived for me, but I, I will do this. If you want to go look for them, there's a couple of, a few tools. These pocket um, guides are really great. They have pictures and names, but nowadays this is the best. <laughs> um, there's an app on there called iNaturalist. I am a huge proponent of iNaturalist. It's a free app. You do have to sign up for an account, but once you do that, it is like a walking field guide. You don't have to carry anything but your phone. It does work offline um, in the sense that it will allow you to search for things. But if you want to upload things and get like a, an ID right away, you do have to wait and get a signal. Um, some of the spaces up in the mountains actually have a signal. It's really great. But with iNaturalist, all you have to do is click a photo, upload it to your account, and it'll immediately species and ge- genus and species your your picture, tell you where it lives. It'll record your lat long, especially if you have your uh, locations on here. iNaturalist was actually started by National Geographic and a couple other universities in the country. It's at, it was sold off and it's now a private entity. But Nat Geo was this whole community science project of collecting and using people who are out in nature to census nature. So they are, it, your data goes into a big huge bank all around the world and you're helping with population counts so you're helping with um understanding ecosystems and who's there and who's not there and frequency of seeing those animals and frequency of seeing those plants and what time of year you're seeing those things so all of that is important data to understand with especially in conservation and how healthy habitats are and it's all this simple app of iNaturalist it's really really easy um i'll have chuck throw a little um logo up in there so you can see what it looks like it's free on apple and google play Store. so that's my other thing is that you don't necessarily have to have the books anymore i'm a book kid but you don't have to this is what'll do it and we are not paid for any of this. oh no sponsorship <laughs> i just love the app i it's and there's other things national audubon has a really great app especially for insects and that one's actually a lot easier for insects um audubon for birds of course but it's like that one's really um really good but i naturalist is the one again not yep. sponsored but i love you <laughs> we're not we get nothing we get back. nothing but it's a great we one and, and as a, a person who does this as a profession i highly mm-hmm. recommend that for people who want to be out and about so and i would say the bigger critters that you're likely to see um would be the deer deer elk, elk, elk. and moose yeah time. yeah yeah bear the big ungul- ungulates yeah 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 but bear i've seen bear i've had i've, I've had, seen I a bear, yeah. bear. Yeah. i've seen a bear. Um, i've not seen mountain lion but i pretty much guarantee they were watching us oh yeah that they were around yes um and coyotes coyotes yeah i've smelled i've smelled mountain lion Mm -hmm. um it's yes it smells like cat cat it smells like cat Cat pee pee. okay i mean they're they're Um, technically a small cat technically yeah yeah because they even purr they purr they're the largest cat that purrs at 300 pounds yes and it's a very big full body robust purr. yeah it's boy. Like, oh, oh you rumble boy, oh. it's so good <laughs> oh kitty <laughs> so but yeah that like i was saying earlier you'll see evidence of or have evidence of the animal before you actually see the animal so mm-hmm. exactly okay give me a second here <laughs> okay so are, are you, are you I'm done. you're done yeah. with that oh my okay going to be talking a little bit about geology and all the fun things that you can find in Colorado as far as precious stones, precious metals, um, different types of volcanology and all that. Yeah, believe it or not, Colorado has volcanoes. We actually have a Grand Slam total of last count of eight discovered and confirmed volcanic sites in Colorado. We actually ha- even have what has been classified by the USGS as an active volcano. And that's Mount Docero. Okay. It they classify it as active because its last eruption was 4200 years ago. Yeah, that's really not that long ago in so, volcano years. I was going to say in geologic time, that was like yesterday. Right. So, you know, there we are on that. 
Um, as far as gems and things like that, we have aquamarine, which is the state stone. Um, that one you're going to be able to find at altitude, and you'll find that one um, at about 13,000 feet and up. Um, I actually, take that back, 11,000 and up. It's above timberline, it's in the scree, and it will be all in that igneous rock formations that are at the top of the volcano. Uh, top of the volcanoes, yes, top of the mountains as well. Rhodochrosite is a little pinkish, almost reddish crystal that you will find, and you'll find it mainly, believe it or not, in mines. They will come into these pockets, and it will be opened up, and they'll usually just be on a wall uh, in Matrix or in the Pegmatite of little bitty cubes of jello yeah or it looks like jello it really does you know um it's a second state so state stone the excuse me um we also have topaz you can find that pretty much anywhere around the pikes peak area around the san juans yes um but garden of the gods area is really prime for topaz okay uh, let's see. We've also got quartz. Oh my, we have all the kinds a lot of quartz. Of quartz. <laughs> a lot of quartz. Um, again, this is where the vol volcanism and water meet, make quartz. So what we have is a whole lot of that. Um, we have sample sizes I have seen as small as my pinky and sample sizes I have seen which are as large as my desk. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen both qualities of clear quartz and smoky quartz that size. Um, let's see what else have we got. We've got sapphires. We have garnets. Uh, we have kyanite. Um, we've got amazonite here. We've uh, amazonite is sort of like a quartz, but it's more blocky. It's sort of like a uh, almost almost a turquoise, but it's not a turquoise. Um, it's more greenish blue than it is actual blue. Uh, let's see what else have we got. We've got, yeah, I mentioned turquoise. Yes, we have that. We have lapis lazuli, peridot. Um, we even have, believe it or not, we even have diamonds here. We do have diamonds. Um, we don't have a huge sampling of diamonds. Like, well, I know there's a, like there's Georgia. A, well, in Arkansas. Arkansas, that's yeah. where it is. Yeah. yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas, you where you can go pay, pay. and pick them up off the ground. Yeah, that part, that national park. Is it a state park or national park? I don't know. It's I think a it's park. a state park. Yeah. It's a park, but it's I don't park. know. <laughs> yeah, but you pay your entrance fee and you keep what you find. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's that's pretty remarkable. And you believe it or not, you can find varying grades. I mean, you mm -hmm. can find industrial grade. You can find mid, mid gem grade. You could find actual high quality high gem quality, grade. Yeah. Um, especially here in Colorado, you never know what you're going to find. You That's really true. don't. But the question is, and you're not guaranteed to find it either. Okay. You can't just all of a sudden look down at the ground. Boom. There it is. You, it's a dice roll. Okay. That's why these are semi-precious. Well, that, yeah, that's why they're worth a lot. Cause yeah. you don't, well, okay, exactly, not everywhere to so. bring that, to bring that home. Um, an aquamarine, a clear aquamarine about the size of my pinky and about as long and depending on how faceted it is around here, could call, could be marketed from anywhere from one hundred and fifty dollars to five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. depending on the quality. Um, it, that's just to give you an idea about that. So it's you know the joke is it's like yeah I can take you out and we're gonna go find some things and I probably won't make you rich, but you never know. <laughs> but I can't guarantee it. I cannot guarantee it, but um, anyway, aquamarines you're going to find, like I said, high at elevation. Rubies you're not going to find at high at elevation all that much, probably about mid-elevation. Um, the reason that you're going to find all of these crystals that we have is because of the volcanoes. Um, the Sawatch Mountain Range is a series of volcanoes. Yeah. Um, the Collegiate Peaks are a series of volcanoes. Uh, let's see, Gunnison, the Gunnison Basin is actually a caldera. Okay. It's also the reason why we have all these hot springs. Yeah. Why we have Glenwood Springs, Steamboat Springs, Idaho Springs, Pagosa, Pagosa Springs. Pagosa is actually really active, yeah. beautifully active. Buena Vista has hot springs. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So, 
you're going to find these and believe it you can also google it and you'll be able to find a map that could be another podcast that could (laughs) that could it could (laughs) Uh, I, i could probably go on for about another hour about just the geology of colorado because i mean we are well the mountains are a geological feature exactly so that's it's how, you, know, you know it's part of our and our lore and, and we our probably charm. should because motivated by all of this i emailed my dad who was a mining engineer for many many years in colorado and asked him about the mines and his experiences where he'd worked and you know what he was mining and all of that stuff and i i got a giant reply so mm-hmm. we could dedicate another episode to the geology and um mm-hmm. the mines the mining activity that happened well, here and i have i haven't even touched on the precious metals yet no i mean we haven't. talked about them yeah. already in past episodes mm-hmm. right but i haven't even touched on what we can pull out of the ground here well, as far as metals and precious metals it's more go. than gold and silver oh it definitely much mm-hmm. more than that the molybdenum Yep. Lead. Mm-hmm. Copper. Leadville. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, Copper Mountain. Yeah. I <laughs> I, I, I make yes. the joke that if you name it, we have it. Probably. Yeah. It's not really a joke. No, no it's really not. You know, we we've got a lot. We we've do. got a lot here. And honestly, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to stop because this deserves really to be an episode unto itself. Yeah, and it I really may have, does. I may do a solo. That's good. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's that's what's kind of you want to play too. I do because I want to give my dad's history on this. Okay, there thing. we go. There we go. So, so it'll the be a personal Chris, angle on, on it'll it. be a Chris and I thing. Well, and that's what's great about like kind of ending here is that you know, this was if we had some pretty three different really specific topics, but the cool thing about where we live and Colorado in itself and why it's such a great tourist state is that you can find your thing. Like, if Absolutely. you're totally exactly. into the geology, the exactly. geology of Colorado is a you can have a whole vacation on based on that. You right. can have a whole vacation based on escaping into nature and finding that space and being away from things. If you're an animal kid like me, like they're everywhere, not necessarily physically there, but their evidence is there and you can learn about their who they are and what they do based on the space that they're in and the evidence they leave behind. Like it's well, There's something and, for everybody. And then even adding to that, our cultural history yes. is oh, so yes. deep so and rich. Thick. And you know, so and and even going back to the our prehistory. Oh, for sure. You know the ancient, uh, it, which we will do when we cover the southern ha- part of the state. Yeah, because That's we were point. under we were underwater for a time. Oh yes, we were in a deep sea for a mm-hmm. time. So you know, I mean, yeah. And maybe the reason I am feeling guilty about spending so much time on the hiking and camping and rafting—that's why people come here, though. So that's why it was important. Well, true, that, but yeah. all of these things. So if you're if you're into going to find the minerals you're gonna want to camp and hike to get up to where you want to start going to look um if you want to see animals same thing right you set up you set up your camp and you sit there quietly Mm -hmm. and they'll come to you and same with um while you're going down the river Mm -hmm. because you're in the middle of the river so they don't really notice you so much so you get to see things along the sides well and adding to that about geologic history mm-hmm. going down the river you get to, yeah you're you gonna see, the see it yeah that 4600 foot drop not yeah. that anyone gets to do the whole thing and you're one gonna go, see you all will of see that. it all yeah, yeah. you see all of that now i do want to mention a, a, a cautionary thing here especially about the precious metals and finding things here mm. in colorado there are several active claims absolutely that yes. are happening especially on mount entero where they mine aquamarine so don't go there. They will be marked. Yeah. They will have boundaries. Unfortunately, there are some of those folks who like to go up there and break through the boundaries and toss Poach. all the mark. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and they poaching. will do some claim jumping. Mm-hmm. Don't be those people. No. It's Severe that, penalties. That to still do that. happens. It's oh, 2024 yeah. I know, right? and we're oh, yeah. talking about claim jumping. <laughs> like it's 1883. Yeah. <laughs> Jumped on my claim. <laughs> Diagnab it. <Yeah>. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> no, I need no. I need have, to like, find that clip and if you've ever seen the movie Paint Your Wagon, we have a whole like thing that we do. <laughs> anyway, it's just yeah.
<laughs> anyway. Oh, that gold been falling under them <laughs> floorboards. <laughs> anyway, it's yeah. it's just kind of it's funny. It hit me as funny because we are it, considered modern times, yet stuff that was used to find you know found our state. Right. Well, and, and all the, that the conflict and stuff is still all that yeah. Western history that people talk about about the cowboys and the Indians and the miners and blah blah blah. blah. We still have all of that. All of that. It's okay, now we're, we're not riding horses through the center of downtown Denver, but we still have cowboys. Yeah. We still oh, have yeah. Native American folks. And we still have miners. And the, and the, all of the claims that everybody has on the land. And, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, and land use and land use rights and all of it. That's very much water our, rights. Another stupid aside there was an episode of Gold Rush. There was a season of Gold Rush where the Hoffmans were actually in Colorado and mining in Colorado. And I can't remember the name of the town that they were that they were mining out of. But it got to the point where the town actually had a city town meeting about them being there. about them being I there. I feel like it was fair play. I it think was in I, South Park somewhere. I I think so. I know it was in Park County. Yeah. That mm -hmm. much we know. But I can't remember exactly where it was and they kicked them out. Mm. They booted them they out. They ran them out of town. Like they did. Like in the good old they, Western tradition. Yeah, there we go. See, you know, <laughs> here we are. out of town. Anyway. Well, and, and nowadays it's not always, it's not only the claim jumping, but the environmental perspective yeah. is as well. Yeah. So we are a lot more aware of of how mining Impact. can damage the environment. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to go in and tear stuff up and have no intent of putting it all back when you're done then you can leave yeah. <laughs> well, on the care the that you have to say. take when you tear it all up. Oh, for sure. You know, not yeah. to pollute the water, yeah. not to, yeah. Because not we pay attention to that. Yeah. We yeah. pay very close attention to that. Yeah, we do now because yeah. we learned the hard way. And well, and the, to aside that too, is that the ecosystems that are up there are bread and butter, whether it's for tourism, for visuals, for animals that live there, for hunting, for fishing, whatever. Yes. That is a big part of our state economy. And if we, mess it up it impacts the whole state well it, it does really yeah does. and even not just economy it actually impacts us if they're healthy we're, we're healthy. healthy and that's mm -hmm. like yeah. that's just you know yeah there, that's a there's whole the, other thing that i would can talk about for, there, yeah i was gonna say yeah. there's very much a symbiotic relationship yeah. yeah healthy healthy land healthy people yep yeah and believe it or not the hunting organizations are a key player in environmental protection yes. because and ducks unlimited well yeah. and trout unlimited <laughs> a lot of well a lot of the monies that go from our hunting and fishing licenses actually go back to the management plans of making sure that the there's the ecosystems are in balance mm -hmm. so hunting and fishing pays and helps contribute to making sure that those animals are healthy and vibrant and vital and so that that's, hunting that's can important. continue right and th yeah. there we go okay that's another episode unto itself <laughs> right there yeah. the hunting and fishing oh. and it's all about aspect. balance and there's not it's just not here everybody gets a license and you can kill everything no. it's not about that it's like very specific and strategic and what yes. you're allowed to, to hunt for and it is subsistence it's not just kill and leave it you have no. to take it out and you have to you either you eat it or it. you donate it and yeah. that's the meat is used use for it. purpose yes. it's not just to cull the herd for funsies it's there's no. You're part of the management plan as a hunter and fisher in Colorado. That's right, because conservation means so much more than just loading a gun and shooting yeah, a bullet. Yeah, there's a there's purpose behind a lot of that, and that yeah. management, and that hunter hunters and fishers are they are stewards of the land. They are and well, and to guarantee that they can come back next year, right? But yes, there we go. Yay, Colorado! We love you. Yeah, sorry, I did not mean <laughs> no, to cut no, you no. off. No, 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 it was not. It was a yeah. good, you know, we just, we could go on and Found another back. topic. To <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we're, <laughs> we're generating content, and I'm good with that as long as I can generate content and bring it all to you guys. Well, and hunting just... and fishing will be great for the fall episodes, yeah. right? We love our we're state. Still in summer. <laughs> There's a lot to do here, and we love where we live, and we want to share that. Absolutely. In, yes, we do. We do. All right, folks, well, thank you very much for joining us. And hopefully in another two weeks, we will do this all again. I have no idea what we're going to do next. We can be talking mining about and minerals. You want to do mining and minerals? I do. Okay, let's do mining and minerals. And Alice, you want to join in? Great. <laughs> okay, Alice is along for the ride. <laughs> Always the third wheel. Oh, jeez. 
Anyway, thank you again, folks, and we'll see you in two weeks. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Come visit. <laughs>